Hey guys, I bet when you woke up this morning you were wondering, where's Scott with Roscoe's Reefs Updates? Well, here we go. Okay, so let's start the update with one big fact. As you can see, um, the back glass, I left it dirty. I'm tr currently trying something out. What I'm looking for is what is cleaning my glass, how it cleans the glass, and also how fast it's cleaning the glass. Well, there is my one troca snail, and that snail has spent the better part of about a week and a half on the glass only. It primarily is the only thing that's cleaning the glass at this point and has worked out on this spot if I can get it into focus because of a little glare. Right there you can see all the trails it's left. Now in this spot you can see those small circles. That area was being cleaned by the mollies. I've been trying to get footage of them actually doing it, but every time I get the camera going, they come up to the front thinking that it's feeding time. The blue tang, the yellow tang, and the hippo tang are spending their day picking off what's on the rock, as they usually do, along with the fox face. So, oh, wait a minute. And there it is. There's your footage of the Molly actually doing its job. So, like I was saying, the fox face is also one that goes along the tank and will pick off the rocks. Uh, my clowns, they don't do much cleaning. They just clean around the frog spawn, as you can see. You're also going to take notice, uh, there's a frag rack in my tank, and as much as I hate to have this in my tank, because I'm not a big fan of having frag tanks in my display, um, this frag rack with the different kinds of zoas, and there's, let me just get it focused for you, uh, there's a bunch of zoanthids here, and a Micromusa, and a Favia, and some candy canes. That was picked out by my son Scotty for his channel, and they were donated by Danny at Coral Lust um, to start his frag tank off with. You'll be seeing more donations and more, more of his corals in a minute, because until his frag, rack, frag tank is up and running, their home right now is my tank. The two hammer corals, the neon green one and the purple and blue tip are doing well. They're filling out, getting fluffier, as well as the uh, ultra rare uh, gold tip. My torches are doing well. The one from Billy Pipes is gaining more and more color back and filling out. The green and purple tip is getting thicker, as well as the green on green. The success of this area is probably the octospawns and um, because they're getting really really thick and even this green tip has started putting out that top one right in the center of the screen that, on the top of the bunch is like a sweeper and a feeder tentacle. Uh, that will come out later on as it starts to withdraw for the night but it will leave that one out to feed. Another donation, and this is from Reefing with Billy Pipes for my son's tank, is these two frog spawns, the neon greens. So they'll be making their appearance in his tank soon enough. I moved the pink red mushrooms over here, and since I've done that, they have doubled in size. So that was a good move for my, on my part. 
The baby fungia plate is still in the middle of the pagoda, or the skeleton of the pagoda, and is coloring up and really looking like, okay, this is where I want to stay and this is where I'm going to grow. This huge candy cane cluster, this colony, is getting bigger and bigger. It's about the size, a little bit bigger than a baseball at this point. So, out of the successes in the tank, this is one of them. This is the candy, <laughs> the uh, birthday cake coral from Billy Pipes. And as you can see, it's encrusting onto the rock work. The encrusting Montipora from that I got picked up from Fisher Hex is doing well in its new spot. And here is a green cat's paw coral. This I picked up and this is new. This was originally picked up for Scotty's tank, but I like it and I think I can work out a deal with him to keep it in my tank. But you never know. The purple cat's paw is doing really well and it's encrusting onto the rock more and more so that is not going to move at all the Montipora Capricornus is growing and doing quite well a lot of the corals in my tank are, are continuing to do well and it's making me feel really, really good about the tank itself and how it's progressed and matured uh, a lot of these corals like the purple digi also and the red digi are, are fanning out and you can see the Hollywood Stunner has doubled in size and the edges are starting to curl up and even on that one edge right here it's starting to curl up and um, stick itself to the overflow tower so in the coming weeks and months it should be quite interesting of how that's going to form out the purple, gold, and green candy canes in the back are doing well, as well as the zoanthid garden. Now, one thing that you will take notice is there was some zoanthids in that side, and you're going to notice in the coming weeks, this area is going to thin out a little bit, and that's because these zoanthids, some of them, are going to be selected to be put into the frag tank and eventually sold by Scotty. He's trying his best to talk me into some of the other chaos and uh, we'll see how persuasive he is the worldwide corals pandora pallies finally um, you can't really see it from this angle but right in between them there's a third polyp that's formed you could barely get it right there let me see if I could zoom in on that yeah, right there you can see the little baby in the middle. So, I put them on this rock to give them a little room to grow. And along with the Rastas and the Sunny D's, um, I think they they like it on their own rock and they're going to spread out more. The Fiji fires right now are closed up. Except for that one polyp there. And I think the reason for that is like most of the zoanthids that are closed up right now my auto top off my JBJ auto top off has um, gone uh, it's basically started to fail so I got to get a new one and I've been manually dosing calc and that in itself has proven to be very interesting so uh, I know that I did put a little bit too much in yesterday and I think that's leading to how they are closed up at this point the Fungia plate is loving life in its new spot. Now, to this side. First, let's start with the Favias. The night before Christmas, Favia is really doing well. It's encrusting more and more every every day. And if you go back to when I originally put it in the tank, it was not covering three quarters of this rock. But now it's gone from edge to edge. And also... You can barely see there, it's curled over the edge of the rock and starting it's starting to head down. And that's why I elected to put this one and this Favia on their own rock to now give them room to spread out and grow. 
Acan Central is basically this area. Uh, you can see a bunch of new Acans that have been put in the tank. Now, all of these Acans and this Micromusa in the middle are going to go in to the frag tank and eventually be sold by him. Uh, you may see some of them at the our next show, which is the Reef and Reptile Show in Edison, New Jersey, uh, coming up in March. So uh, stay tuned for some more information regarding that. The red and green Blasto, which I put in the tank to get color back, you can see the color has come up, and they've actually proven to be a real interesting piece because not only are they red on the rim but also they have these little streaks of like a yellowish color and this really neon green mouth so that's really being a pretty piece this coral here was a source of some mystery wondering what it could be I did have a chance to speak with Luciavo at Worldwide Corals and he identified this as a Symphelia Wilsoni, and that's a member of the uh, of the brain family, kind of like the Welzo family. And um, he did say it's a very nice piece. So now we have an ID on this, and we need to see it grow. You can see how big it gets because there is uh, the spot on the plug where it's you can see the ring it leaves. Right now it's kind of curled up and. It's still, uh, it'll puff up to its full size during the course of the day. So, the other thing we have is the cloves. The cloves are these original two, and now there is three babies that are popping out. You can just make this one out. I'm trying not to zoom in too far because it'll shake like crazy. But there's these two, and there's another one, I believe, in the middle. So that's starting to grow and spread. So fish-wise, everybody's doing fine. And I'm going to do an episode uh, coming up that's going to concentrate on filtration, uh, my thoughts on it, and also uh, basically how to run a reef tank like this using basically no equipment at all except a protein sk skimmer and also being able to budget yourself to maintain the tank. There's also going to be a update on the JCOT gyre. Let me get this out of the way because the interesting fact about this is now I'm getting micro bubbles blowing out of this as you can see. They're coming from the unit itself, and if I change the pattern, it'll blow up a whole bunch of bubbles to the top. So, uh, there'll be a real big update on that. So, that's basically it for this week in the tank. Uh, like I said, coming up on, a, on the next episode will be the filtration area. So, stay tuned for that. Oh, there's one more coral. I forgot. This little green guy that used to be on the mushroom rock... I put it by itself, it's doubled in size, the sweepers come out every day, and it's making me believe that it is either a um, Acan Barabanki or some form of Scully. So we'll follow the progress of that in future episodes. So that's it for today. And uh, as always, this is Scott, and I'll see you next time around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.